What is up guys? Um, today we're doing a video on making your own uh, panfish or sunfish float. Uh, unfortunately we're not catching any massive sunfish that we had planned. Uh, but we are catching a good couple of fish. Um, it's pretty straightforward so uh, I'll try and keep it as short as possible. Let's get started. So uh, as with everything we start off with the rough material. This is just a rough piece of wood. It's um, five centimeters by a centimeter square rough cut not very precise I cut it out on the bandsaw but it was a little bit too small to uh, make an accurate straight cut because it might have cost my fingertips so um, we'll go from here um, I am thinking of a couple of designs that uh, I want to use for the panfish float uh, now the main problem that I've come across here in the US is that a lot of the floats that are sold in your uh, retail stores are very big, uh, very poor to balance, or yeah, just, just not a, a great uh, float for small fish, like sunfish. Uh, now, granted, uh, your, your bluegills can gr grow pretty big, uh, but they grow pretty big for a reason. They're not stupid, and so um, those big floats put up way too much resistance. And uh, therefore, I just wanted to kind of design my own small sunfish or panfish float. So uh, we've done the carving, as you can see here. We're uh, doing a bit of rough sanding with 220 grit uh, all over. Uh, that should be pretty straightforward. The building process, I try to keep as short as possible to keep it straightforward. Uh, this is a pretty neat tip. Um, you can use a uh, pencil sharpener to uh, symmetrically uh, create a point on your float. Um, works really well, super quick, and uh, makes it nice and symmetrical and round. So that's pretty good. Uh, when the point is sharp, I just tend to cut it off and uh, sand it down. Just be careful with uh, how you're using your knife there, but you don't want the wood to split on where you cut it, so just uh, make sure you get a good cut before you break it off. Now after that I'll uh, send it with some 220 grit as well. I'm going for a very small float as you can see here. Uh, it's only going to be balanced out with uh, I think a gram worth of split shots. So, uh, And it's going to be uh, still steady enough to hold a, a couple of pieces of corn on the hook as well. Those are all things you kind of want to consider when making your float. Also, this wood is really light. If you're going to make a float that's going to be really small, like this one, uh, the lighter the wood, the better. A very good option is balsa wood. Uh, I don't, I'm not even sure what type of wood this is, but it's very light for its size, so it's perfect. Now we're drilling the hole in the bottom of the float here. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, please do it in a different way. I don't want you to get injured. Uh, I feel confident enough with this tool to not injure myself. But, uh, yeah, please don't copy it over if you've never done it before like that. Um, here we're creating the pin that the line will go through and that will be attaching uh, to the bottom of the float. Uh, it's some really light gauge wire that I'm bending around uh, another bit of wire here to uh, get the right size diameter um, gap for the line to go through. Obviously, you don't want it too big. Uh, and we want it, you know, open enough for the uh, line to comfortably go through there and close enough for the bobber stopper to uh, work as a bobber stopper, obviously. So, uh, here we're pinching the two ends so we can uh, fit the uh, pin in the float. Make sure it fits well. That looks okay, but we have to tap it in a little bit further. So, that goes all right. Be careful with the light woods that you don't damage it too much. Uh, drilling is uh, a little bit difficult because you can easily snap the wood. Uh, they're not nearly as durable as uh, your quality hardwoods, like the ones that we use for uh, big GT lures and swim baits. So uh, yeah, just a heads up, be careful with that. So uh, once the pin is in, we want to secure it. Uh, the way that the, It's going to be the same way as that I secure my um, weights and my lures. We're gonna add some uh, sawdust and add some super glue on top of it. Um, it's pretty straightforward, really easy. 
and you can f always fill up a gap in a uh, very good way it's always watertight so that's all done we're going to sand it a little bit now straighten up the wire and that's uh it's all really straightforward. This is much easier than lure building, I'll tell you that much. You don't have to really worry about balance weights until you actually uh, put the float on the hook. So, uh, float on the line, I mean. So, uh, here we actually use um, a little bottle of Loctite, which is uh, the super glue that I use. And the nifty thing about it is if you uh, screw off the top, if the opening is big enough for your float to fit in there. Now, the reason why I'm dipping the float in here is because I want to make it watertight. Um, I'll dip that float in there for a couple of minutes, leave it hanging in there. Uh, that way, the super glue will soak into the wood grain. Uh, and when I, when I pull it out and hang it to dry, it will harden up and in that way uh, seal the wood. So that works really well. Uh, just double check if your wood got full coverage on that one. And there you go. Uh, you're ready to go paint it and um, put a little bit of a indicator on there. It's real straightforward. Um, this is a quite a good spot here for a lot of sunfish, and there's also some bigger ones in between it. We've had some uh, pretty good success over the past here. Um, first, we're going to build up the spot with some um, corn, a little bit of bread. Um, that's going to be like the staple diet here, so um, hopefully that will work. You can already see some movement in the shoreline here. Uh, hopefully there's some big bluegill running around, so we'll see how we go. And hopefully the flood works. <laughs> Westbra, organic corn. There we go. Just feed a little bit at the time. I'll do for now. Well, it's a start, but not the size we came here for. some bait left but I might add a bit of corn for some extra size Now, the weather today was uh, a bit unstable. It was uh, windy at times, and sometimes we had a couple of cloud breaks and it'd be nice and sunny. Otherwise, uh, a lot of overcast. Whenever it was overcast, the fishing was a bit slow, but luckily, we had some good moments as well. All right, slowly but steadily, they're getting a little bit bigger. Still nothing to write home about, but it's improvement, so. Hopefully there'll be some bigger fish on the spot pretty soon. It's raining, but we're slowly moving up. Every time we get a, a slot higher in terms of size, so hopefully uh, we can keep it up and eventually get a nice, at least pound of uh, sunfish. Caught them here before up to a pound and a half, so fingers crossed. Ready. 
Ooh, bit on an angle there. Let's see how that goes. It's just stopped raining. Uh, we caught a couple more fish. Again, nothing to write home about, but they're staying a consistent size. And the rain has just stopped, so we've uh, been keeping the fish entertained, keeping them uh, in the spot with corn. Hopefully, eventually, we'll get a bigger fish, obviously. Uh, but now that the rain has stopped, the bites have increased. The fish have come up closer to the surface, so they're much more in a feeding uh, mood right now. Hopefully, we can catch a couple nice fish. Well, the circumstances are good. I'm going to upsize the bait a little bit. Let's see how we go. That's the biggest one for now. It's a pretty one. Nice, nice sunfish. The sun's come through a little bit, so that's increasing the bite. So. Beautiful little sunfish there. Going back. So hopefully we can uh, keep replicating that. Just get a bit of corn out to feed them. Keep them on the spot. Now the trick is to not to feed too much. You want that to be a bit of, um, I guess, um, aggressiveness when they feed. We want that to be more fish than food. Let's put it that way. So we can keep them on the spot. We can keep them uh, aggressive enough to, to be taking the bait. So, but the key is to keep feeding them little bits at a time. Not nearly as big, but uh, very pretty. So let's throw this one back real quick. All right, the bigger fish are definitely on the spot. This one's uh, quite a nice size for here. Swallow that hook, take it out shortly, but oops. That's a very pretty sunfish. We'll throw them back. Hopefully there's bigger ones coming. <laughs> so what I just did, I noticed that I caught a couple of small fish, so I adjusted um, how deep my float was sitting. Actually, I adjusted the bobber stopper on the top, and I also increased the bait size. So hopefully, there'll be uh, a precedent for uh, further big fish to come in. See how we go. So it was a little bit quiet as the wind picked up at this point again, and then very shortly after, there was another cloud break. It uh, was very consistent with um, whatever the weather was doing when I was getting my bites. Back to small again. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well. Okay, that's definitely not a sunfish. That's why we weren't catching anything anymore. There's a carp on the spot.
Well, guys, that can happen too. It's a good way to ruin your uh, feeding spot for panfish or sunfish, but uh, oh, they're good fun on light tackle. I released them in the water, so it's good. Let's see if we can uh, still catch some sunfish. I'm sure they shouldn't be too far. I already put in a hand of corn, so fingers crossed they're still there. Another one. Literally two minutes after we released the other car. Oh no. Better keep this feeding spot alive. It's all good and fun, but oh boy. So when I wish I had a net, it would make life a lot easier. This one had to come out to get the hook taken out, but I'll put him back real quick. Well, as you can see guys, not only the carp, but also the weather ruined the big sunfish party. Uh, at least we caught some fish and we were able to test out the little float. Uh, worked the treat, was very well balanced with uh, the two split shots on it. And uh, yeah, we did catch a couple of fish. So. And those carp were a lot of fun too. Uh, but we'll be back for some bigger sunfish hopefully. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. Cheers.